Building your empire is challenging, and so because of that, you're going to need dirty money in order to do it, right? Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review, and today's game up on the tabletop Dirty Money by Capital Gains Studios. It plays two to five players, takes about 45 minutes to play, and is for ages 12 and up. And in the game, you're playing as a corrupt politician or businessman attempting to launder dirty money. You're going to be utilizing money and dirty money to buy things like paintings and businesses and whatnot in order to get your money to turn from dirty to clean. And as you do that, other businessmen in the game are going to attempt to show off your dirty deeds to the government while all at the same time launder their own. At the end of a certain period of time, when you've gathered enough businesses, the game will end and you'll calculate your points and whoever has the most money that they have laundered via placing down for victory points will win the game. Let's show you down below what the game looks like, how you play the game, and the best way to launder dirty money in the game. Dirty money. Welcome, candidate, to the game of Dirty Money, in which each player is going to select a character or villain to play the game. The Corruption Rat, the Money Launderer, the Loan Shark, Kitsuya, and the Bears of Wall Street are some options you can choose from. Each of them are just going to have the player reference on the back, as well as an area for blacklist cards that you're going to be getting throughout the game. These are negative points and you try and avoid them as best as possible. You're going to start off by dealing out locations to the board. You'll always have the USA, Europe, and Japan. And then if it's a two to three player game, the Banana Republic, an auction house for a five player game, and of course the Black Market for a four player game. If you're not utilizing these cards, that means you're playing a two player game or three, in which case you'll have these guys out. You're also going to have these location cards here in which you're going to deal out two to face up right above these these cards here and then you're also going to have money cards distributed down below as well you'll shuffle this deck up and deal two out in each of these different locations here every player is going to get four money cards to start the game so you can take the action cards out or shuffle them back in if somebody gets them but make sure everybody gets money cards to start the person who's in last place will get four everybody else is going to get three there are four types of money you're going to be having euros crypto usa and yen and the crypto are going to be considered wild and to begin the game it's pretty simple you'll choose the starting player who's the person farthest away from the last player who has their four cards and you're going to give them this little first player token and then you're going to choose a location of these available. There's four of them here in a two to three player game. And whatever location you choose will net you all of the money underneath that location. So in this case here, if this player here wanted specifically to get these USA dollars, they could choose this location here, gathering them into their hand. Afterwards, they're going to execute any actions, if available, in any order. And the action cards are going to look like these guys here. And so this one here would be an audit. If I actually chose to do this space here, I take the USA $2 and then I also audit. And it would tell you what to do on the specific action card, which you would then discard. After that, then you're going to go ahead and perform the location's action. Whatever location you chose to gather the money from, you'll do that action. So in this case here, this player is going to be able to remove one of the nasty uh, blacklist cards from their card, which can get placed underneath the card, and then they're going to become the first player. So I'll switch that marker uh, to the first player. Um, but they already have the first player in this case. After that, they'll perform uh, basically any of the effects of placement cards they own. These are the placement cards in the game. If you own them, you can place them. Now, in this specific case, pretty simple, but let's go ahead and have the next player choose so I can show you some interesting things. Uh, let's go ahead and have this player choose USA. He'll gather these cards here, putting them into his hand, performing the specific action. All other players reveal their hand, and any player with two or more of these dirty money symbols will take one of these nasty cards. So you'll check this player does have two dirty money symbols, in which case if they were playing as the Bears of Wall Street, which I guess I'll put it right here, they're going to take one of the cards from the discard pile, place it underneath just like this to symbolize they have received dirty money and they've gotten in trouble by, I don't know, the FDA or the CIA, you name one of those guys. And then they can perform this action here. They can buy up to two of these cards up here if they have the right currency. 
Right now, they need USA dollars, and they do have USA dollars. In this case, they are going to have three, two, and two, which is a total of seven, plus they have three in crypto, which is a total of uh, 10. And they can choose to buy any of these that they want. If you overbuy, then you're going to lose the money, however. So in this case, if I spend all $10 for this eight, I would not get to keep any change. So in this case, I'm actually gonna go ahead and spend seven and put them in a discard pile here and I can take this accounting firm and place it next to my character. This is one of 10 needed to end the game. Once somebody triggers the end of the game, which is 10, people are going to tally up their score. After that, they can't choose to buy this one here. The round is going to end. Everybody has taken their turn. You're going to basically flip over these uh, placement cards here, putting them down. And you're also then going to give every location with no money, two of them. And you're going to give any location with uh, two, one, or three, one, the max being four. So basically anybody who doesn't choose anything, you can go ahead and place an extra card there. In which case they can buy or take these cards. They're gonna get more if the location wasn't chosen the previous round. And then once again, starting with the first player, you will continue playing the game and you're gonna keep gathering. You'll choose a location. You're going to choose what money you're gonna be taking based on that location you'll get. So for instance, if the next player, this player here wants these guys here, he'll take all of these. Then he can go ahead and choose to perform the action here, which is to buy these. If he has enough money, he can buy either one of these or both putting them next to their character card and then the next player will do the same thing in which case maybe he'll take this one here and then you're going to go ahead and refill the board once again uh, increasing the amounts of all of the cards and the game will keep going and that's pretty much the idea of the game at the end of the game you're going to score points based on the bottom card bottom of these cards here these little stars are basically victory points at the end of the game you'll lose points for specific things whether it be blacklist cards and whatnot and whoever has the most points at the end of the game dirty money after somebody has acquired 10 of these placement cards will be the winner Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Let's come up and discuss the game. Building your empire is challenging. And so because of that, you're going to need dirty money in order to do it, right? It's, it's very important. And in the game, dirty money, that's basically the idea of the game. You'll be collecting money from locations. You'll be utilizing that location's ability, taking placement cards and buying them, placing them in front of you and gathering a tableau. Additionally too, another rule is if you have more than seven cards in your hand at the end of your turn, you'll have to discard them and turn them into blacklist cards. Blacklist cards are not good you do not want to have them and so there are a ton of different ways to get rid of them whether it be going to the banana republic or whether it be utilizing a placement card so for instance if you gather something like a charity card it's going to give you two points at the end of the game but it's also going to net you two mi minus two of the nasty cards uh, that you might normally have to get so for instance if i had this character here with two blacklist cards at the end of the game and i also had charity that would negate the blacklist cards out of deal with some of these cards also will give you bonus points for having sets of specific things. So for instance, if I ended up having an American, a Japanese, and a European uh, different set of each of these placement cards, I'll get three points in addition for each one I have. And all these bonuses can stack. Certain cards, if you have multiples of them, will score you more and more points as you gather them. And other ones are going to allow you to hide money underneath them or kind of launder as well. You will be also using actions in the game as you gather money. Sometimes you might also gather an action like inspections, randomly taking two cards from a player. And if, dir and if dirty money take from them and, and player takes a nasty blacklist card for each of them. So you can steal from them and then punish them for having that dirty money or having audit all other players reveal their hand and the player with the most dirty money will take a blacklist and blacklists generally are going to come from having more than seven cards in your hand in which case you have to tuck them or if they if you get them from just some action card or whatnot you're going to put it from the discard pile and you're just trying to gather a an industry you're trying to create a foundation of wealth without being called out by your opponents and uh, doing it as honest as possible or at least as honest as possible without people noticing that you're not doing it honestly i feel like i'm playing breaking bad here right and as you continue to get more and more things into your tableau your points total is going to increase this is like i said tableau management with hand management and then choosing from locations based on what money is available there cryptocurrency is a wild and very very highly wanted in the game because it lets you get what you need however you're gonna have to deal with any types of dirty money you might have to pull from 
the different locations to get it, or maybe it's an action card that's there that you don't necessarily need. Obviously, with more players, the action cards will be more interesting because it's going to reveal certain cards from other players' hands that will affect them, and usually when you come into some situation where if, for instance, you take an action card from a location and you're playing a two-player game and that player doesn't have any dirty money, it might not affect them, whereas if you had three or four players, it would. All the characters and artwork are very solid. I enjoy all of the Capital Game Studio games. They're very interesting because they all have this like movie genre theme to them, which I, I absolutely love. I think it's a really, really cool and unique idea that I haven't seen before. And they all are played in the same universe. They're all kind of attached and they all involve being politically malfeasant. You're, you're doing bad things, right? Whether it be dealing with debt or whether it be dealing with crypto cartels or cryptocurrencies or whether you're simply stealing and lying and cheating and attempts to gather dirty money. A solid game. This is a very enjoyable game as we played this game constantly. The first time we played it, we didn't even finish the game because my wife had something she had to do, but she instantly wanted to come back and continue playing it because she enjoys these type of tableau management games and controlling what money goes into your hand, what type of money, how you can affect your opponents, what you can play on your field, and how you can gather the most points in the most efficient way. Players, as they play this game, are going to get better and better as they play, and each unique game is going to have different circumstances that will affect the players. Obviously, with more players comes more locations, like the Black Market, that will let you buy wild properties or placement cards, as well as the Auction House as well. You'll be able to do certain things as to what you can gain throughout the game, and how you play will kind of increase with the amount of players, the different types of things you can do in the game. Overall, solid game, a whole lot of fun. If you like the rest of the Capital Game Studio games, this is not one that I would shrug off. I wouldn't. I would definitely want to check this one out as well. Keep it my collection of all the beautiful movies movie genre games that they have. Dirty Money, good game. Really, really enjoyed it. Link down below in the description if you want to pick the game up. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this video, check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. And if you do, hit that notification bell button. It helps us out greatly here. Do make sure to check out the Facebook group as well. Go ahead and join us, follow us, and get notifications for our live stream that happens every Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. PST, where we play games just like this one. In fact, we have played Cryptocurrency, and we also played Debtzilla Live on stream. And this one just might hit it as well. A lot of games that we enjoy from Capital Games. Thank you so much much for watching and as always I look forward to dealing with dirty money with you next time.